Hello, good evening, and warm welcome to Business Life. Coming up in our headlines, the Institute of Economic Affairs forecasts an increase in the policy rate by 200 basis points to 26.5% ahead of the monetary policy rate announced by the Bank of Ghana. Financial analyst Christian Techijan has described government's decision to reach a deal on debt restructuring for bondholders under an IMF program as unfortunate. The fund managers do not actually promise a fixed income on your investments. It's, it's basically about what the market gives them, which could be positive or negative. But it's just unfortunate that in this regard, uh, it's, a, it's a negative outlook, so they have to bear the consequences. And also in this bulletin, fishing companies demand urgent meeting with the sector minister to address pertinent issues. When they are even working full time and you pay them, the monies are not able to sustain them. So when somebody to, you have somebody to go and stay at home for four months and it's not being paid, and you don't know when your vessel is going to get ready to go, it is a concern. We've got details of these and many others lined up for you. Please stay. Pleasure you could stay on. Let's now settle for the details. I am Pius Kujubaka. The Institute of Economic Affairs is forecasting an increase in the policy rate by 200 basis points to 26.5% when the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, announced developments in the Ghanaian economy on Monday, November 28, 2022. According to the Institute, the significant gap between inflation and policy rate has compelled banks to access central bank funds at cheaper rates and on lend to the government at higher rates, which is impacting negatively on the economy. The expected increase in the policy rate will further increase the cost of lending and consequently cost of doing business. Now, the Deputy Minister of Finance, Dr. John Kuma, has clarified that government is yet to reach a decision on its debt operations announced in the 2023 budget reading. According to him, an initial attempt to explain what the government's debt exchange program was has been misconstrued as the government's position on the matter. Mr. Kuma, in an earlier interview, had indicated some local bondholders could lose about 30% of their investments and a possible uh, suspension of interest payments for years. Take a listen. 30% discretionary expenditure for 2022 was 30 billion. Exactly. Yes, was so that's the question we are asking now. So all the additional ones you've just announced, how much will that save us? Okay, so I don't have the figures with me right now. Uh, because uh, if you quantify the specifics, because there are different budget lines. Uh, if you uh, the, the fuel, for instance, last year we were talking about 15 million cities uh, savings on fuel alone that were given for people's uh, uh, allowances. If you are talking about accommodation, which is given to uh, uh, civil servants and. And, and political appointees that will save us about 20 million and and several others so by the time you put all together you'll be saving about 200 million ghana cities from some of these interventions but speaking on pm express business edition dr kuma explained that before the government would roll out a program an agreement would first have to be reached with both domestic and international investors to discuss the terms of the operations explaining what the debt exchange program was all about mm. it was not speaking in specific to what is going to be done mm. so i just want to put that clarity out that no decisions have been made government is committed to an orderly and amicable process to engage all the parties you can't announce any percentage when you have not even engaged the parties mm. 
her. So, but in order to let people understand what the dead exchange program was about, we went into examples, and that is creating a different impression now. Interesting. So, as we speak right now, no agreement has no been reached. Agreement. The government hasn't put anything on the, the table in terms of even how those debts restructuring could, could be done. Yes. That could result in some haircuts and all the rest. At all. No conclusions, no agreements. But government has announced the program that it will launch it very soon. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are waiting for. Interesting. I just want to so, take so, so, to so uh, for those who were, were worried that I had some bumpy person with the bangs, I'm going to get some haircuts and all the rest. That is still early days yet, early, or yes. something is going to happen because I remember people saying that people said that we are not going to the fund for a program, and there was a program. I mean, there, there are some people who, anytime government speaks, mm. they still want to hold that with a pinch of salt. Now you're clarifying to us that there hasn't been any conclusion on this. Can I hold you by your word, Honorable? Um, in fact, that is the situation, and government is going to launch it. The government only announced the program called the Debt Exchange Program. Mm -hmm. And let's stick to what the budget, budget has announced. Mm -hmm. uh, in the right time, the ministry and all the stakeholders, and even with the fund, do the announcement on how it is going to go. Mm -hmm. Of course, you should remember that we have domestic and external partners that we have to fully engage. It is the outcome of that engagement that will result in specifics. Mm -hmm. We are not there yet. Oh, no. so, all right, so reacting to this development, financial analyst Christian Tichijan said the decision by government is unfortunate. These financial institutions have got uh, contracts with their customers and depending on what uh, the, the stipulations in that contract were, yes, some have already started carrying out the mark-to-market the, the -market evaluation. And indeed, the fund managers do not actually promise a fixed income on your investments. It's, it's basically about what the market gives them, which could be positive or negative. But it's just unfortunate that in this regard, uh, it's, a, it's a negative outlook, so they have to bear the consequences. But what I can say is that uh, government itself uh, has not finalized on anything, as the deputy minister actually had uh, put across for our communication. Um, once they are done with all of these uh, roadmaps, the thematic areas that these things are going to yes, they are going to give us some form of communication, and then everyone will be able to run with it. The government has actually come out with um, with um, the modalities where they will be able to engage some um, analysts, some uh, people. That's a five-member committee that's that's already been you know created. And no roadmap or working document is, is out yet. But like I did indicate earlier, uh, that is how fund management is all about. There is no fixed income that is promised. And depending on the returns on the market, which gives us um, an output. But unfortunately, now it means people will have to lose their, their, their principal. So that is, that is what it is. Meanwhile, senior finance lecturer at the University of Cape Coast, Siram Kawa, is worried consumers will be the ones to suffer the brunt of the 15% increase in value-added tax as it will push prices of commodities on the market further up. A move, he says, will defeat the fight against inflation. He spoke on the marketplace. The revenue measures are okay, but the rate we have fixed for the VAT is going to make things more difficult. The expenditure cut, we, we do not know the quantum of money that will be saved in terms of the four cuts, uh, the travels, the meetings, and the rest. We do not know. It would have been very good if government downsized its size in terms of the ministries, the agencies that we have over time. Now, in terms of buying uh, fuel using our gold reserve or the gold that we have in our country, that is an excellent move. That is a move that will reduce the pressure on the dollar. And then the act would also save us some amount of money. But the question we want to ask is, what is our medium of exchange as a country? The medium of exchange we have as a country is money. And is the Ghana city. So if we are using gold, which is not a medium of exchange, it's just a store of value that we have. If we are using it, are we exchanging or we are buying over a period of time? That will be determined by government and then the parties that... 
exchange rate that we have. And that will not be so much because the uh, fuel that we import in our country is not the only in the, the exchange rates that we have. We have other factors that affect the exchange rate. So the fuel component will just be good. And once we get it, it means that fuel prices in our country will be lower. And once the fuel prices are lower, it will uh, translate into the price of transportation and then the price of commodities that are affected by fuel price to also go down. All right, so away from the 2023 budget and its related stories, members of Kuapa Koko Cooperative Farmers and Marketing Union have vowed to resist what they term as illegal removal of their president. The union president, Fatima Ali, has been asked to step aside as acting managing director of Kuapa Koko Limited following allegations of financial malfeasance. But the farmers insist it is unconstitutional for any employee of the company to take decisions on behalf of farmers who own the Fair Trade Certified Organization. There is more in the following report. The Kuapa Koko Cooperative Farmers and Marketing Union and the Kuapa Koko Limited have been entangled in power play since last month. Some national executives and district managers from some societies of Kuapa Koko passed a resolution in October asking acting managing director Fatima Ali to step aside. This was to allow investigations into alleged financial malfeasance. <laughs> Madam Fatima denies the allegations and has since filed a suit challenging her suspension she describes as illegal. Members of the Farmers Union at a press conference in Kumasi on Thursday described as illegal attempts by some employees of the Kuyapa Koko Limited to meddle in managerial issues of the company. They have vowed to face off with persons they accuse of fighting for their parochial interests. And Our vice president is behind all these things. And it's not just only him, but there is about four or five presidents in certain societies who are with him doing this thing. And they've been assisted by some managers who own the company. And uh, the company has come to realization that those people have to pay the money that they own before they can work and based on that the money that they have stolen from the company is what they are using to overthrow the uh, constitution that we have meanwhile the farmers lament the power play is affecting their upkeep as dried cocoa beans meant to be bought by the kuyapa cocoa limited remain on the shelves. They want the IGP and the Chief Justice to intervene to restore sanity in the two organizations. From Kumase for Joy News, I'm Interior. To some other stories, fishing companies have asked Minister for Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Mavis Hawakumsen, as a matter of urgency to organize a meeting which addresses issues affecting them. The issues include regulations for the industry, cost of fish due to some vessels not going to sea, depreciation of the city, among others. This came to light at fisheries stakeholder meeting organized in Tema. Correspondent Kwame Yanka has the rest of the story. The fisheries stakeholder meeting on fuel bankering services for marine fishing vessels brought to four challenges in the sector. Key amongst these were regulations for the industry, cost of fish due to some vessels not going to sea, depreciation of the city, taxes on fuel, payment of permit fee in dollars, among others. Board Secretary for Ghana Industrial Trawlers Association, Nana Oyeman Ufurini says, currently, one has to spend about 2.4 million cities on a vessel per trip. He says, vessels have not worked for about five months, despite impact on employment, taxes, and other benefits. If you have about 22 seamen, that's Ghanaian seamen on a vessel, for assessed patrice, you are looking at something close to about 30. 
and you are paying all of them. The seamen are on contract, so for four months that they haven't gone to sea, they've not been paid. But if you are like me, you get worried. When they are even working full time and you pay them, the monies are not able to sustain them. So when somebody, to, you have somebody to go and stay at home for four months and it's not being paid, and you don't know when your vessel is going to get ready to go, it is a concern. Not for even the owner as, as, a, as a business owner, but workers. Minister for Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Mavis Hawakumsin, assured that a meeting involving Goyal, affected parties, finance, energy and transport ministries will be held to address these concerns. We will prefer that the industry deals with company that is permitted by the authority to do bunkering at sea. Why? Because um, the authority frowns at uh, illegal transshipment and activities on sea. And it also gives way to piracy. I need to liaise with the finance ministry, the transport ministry, energy ministry, and all the agencies that are involved. So I cannot give a timeline right now. But that's the assurance I've given that we're going to work on it. Head of Technical and Special Products at Goyal, John Tegu, indicated that such engagements help in getting feedback and appropriate responses to issues of their customers. So I'm very sure that with the education, they should be able to understand how prices are determined and now uh, they can be well informed. And in this case, they, they will realize that Goyal is there not to make excessive profit out of them but rather if i may call it subsidizing the products in such a way that the customer may may not be uh, worse off meanwhile south african high commissioner to ghana grace mason sees the fishing industry as a catalyst for development and the ocean's economy honorable minister is a catalyst for development of our continent a catalyst for development in this sector of our ocean's economy and for the trajectory of the African continental free trade area. The opportunities that it provides. Other stakeholders, including Ghana Maritime Authority and Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, were present. Some fruit exporters are lamenting about the impact of poor road networks on their quality of their produce. According to them, fruits are perishable foods that get destroyed when delayed on the road. Speaking on the sidelines of the ceremonial planting of banana seedlings at the Kwon Left Bank, Vice President of Golden Exotics Limited, Olivia Chansang, appealed to government to expedite the rehabilitation of the roads. Roads are considered as critical infrastructure that accelerates growth and development. Hence, government's declaration of 2020 as the year of roads. However, three years down the line, fruit exporters bemoan the bad state of roads as they turn to railway to transport their produce to the ports. Olivier Chassang is vice president of Golden Exotics Limited. This is one of the big issues for us is the state of the roads. You, we came by Akuse Road, but if you go from Asutari to uh, Asutari Junction, you will see 20 kilometers of very, very bad road. This is not good for us. This is not good for the, our trucks. This is not good for the bananas we are inside, etc., etc. And we try to maintain, but as a company, we cannot maintain a tar road. We can maintain a dirt road, not well, it's costly, etc. But the tar road, you cannot. So uh, this is the main issue we, we complain about. Golden Exotics Limited organized the ceremonial planting of banana seedlings at the Kong Left Bank. Speaking at the event, Minister for Food and Agriculture, Dr. Osu Efri Yakutu said, the ceremony signified the beginning of the investment of the Togome project under the Ghana Commercial Agriculture Project. 
they are not new in Ghana, as I told you, on the right bank. They've been working and producing uh, bananas for the last 20 years. So uh, it's not surprising that they've taken the lead in, in jumping into this uh, new development. The other 13 will follow. And when it, they do, it, it will contribute substantially to the transformation agenda of the Akufuado government. So it is a very historic day that we have all the stakeholders, the World Bank, uh, the Ministry itself, uh, the Irrigation Development Authority, the traditional authorities, the regional administration, all together for this ceremony to signify the beginning of this investment. Meanwhile, Mancrado of the Togome traditional area, Togwin Gidi the fourth, says the portion of land allocated to the indigents is too small. He made a call to government for an extension. In the initial stage of the project, we, were, we the locals were trained to farm. And uh, the problem now is, uh, since then, as at now, we were not giving our farming lands. They concentrated, concentrated on these investors only. And we are also saying that they should give us our land. And moreover, as of now, we're not giving our portions yet to also start farming. And you know, the project increases most of the villages. So we told them, at least, they have to reserve some land for these communities. The banana plantation on the Pong left bank will employ over 600 persons. You're still watching Business Live here on the Joy News Channel with me, Pius Kujubaka. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back with you. This is still Business Live here on the Joy News Channel with me, Pius Kujubaka, and we continue with the rest of our stories. And players within the engineering space have been charged to imbibe professionalism in their work to push for more investors. According to the Executive Director for the Ghana Institution of Engineering, Engineer David Kwetia Nyante, this is necessary to support Ghana's energy transition agenda. Speaking to Joy Business at the 2022 Engineering Excellence Awards, he called for concerted effort to fight for resilience in the face of climate change and pandemic. The award is given to members for their outstanding contributions in promoting engineering excellence and innovations in Ghana. Engineer David Yante said, the energy transition agenda will require substantial resources, hence the need for more investment. Well, economic challenges, uh, we haven't gone out there to talk to them about that yet. And we haven't had any communication on that yet, but generally everybody is in this uh, situation. The system, you know, the worldwide issues of uh, uh, economic issues all around us. So definitely, I mean, once we are in this ecosystem, we will definitely uh, have issues on the economic front as well. Well, there are a lot of projects going on, so we have uh, engineers quite busy doing all these projects. We have a lot of engineering institutions coming up, so you have a lot of a lot of engineering education also going on. So we need to encourage our people to be professional and to practice the way that uh, it has to be done the right way and uh, get their licenses, you know, get registered with the Engineering Council and go about their duties to uh, help this country develop its infrastructure. Chief Executive for the Volta River Authority, Engineer Emmanuel Intridako stated that alternative energy sources can and should be utilized to minimize greenhouse gas emissions. Climate change is a global thing. It's not a question of whether something is being done right or something is being done wrong. It has a global effect. So it doesn't really matter what you do in your country. I think we all should work together as people of this world to deal with the issue of climate change. In our part of the world, climate change, a couple of things that we should really be looking out for. I mean, you see extremes in the weather situation these days. The climate science tells us that these extreme events are due to climate change. So there's the issue of emissions and all that, especially in the area of transportation, power generation and all that. And so climate change is reality. Uh, I mean, the, the, the recent, uh, I did not attend it, but the recent um, conference, COP27, emphasize that and I think there are some mitigation measures and some adaptation measures that we as a country we have laid out that we are going to follow. I think the Ministry of Energy is the one uh, is, a, is the one that is um, spearheading that particular effort. So if you take a utility like us, I think that would be more specific. 
Christians. Love FM's Emmanuel Kwesi Deborah was recognized at the award winning the Engineering Evangelism Award. This year's awards was under the theme Engineering Resilience in the Face of Climate Change and Pandemic. And congratulations to Emmanuel Kwesi Deborah there. And that's it for Business Life for tonight. Grateful serving you. I am Pius Kujobaka. For more news, kindly log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Do have a lovely weekend.